Hey everyone, uh, this is a recording of one of my life drawing sessions with me talking over the top of it. Uh, the site that I'm using is lineofaction.com, uh, but there are some other useful uh, references down in the description below. Uh, thanks. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Daniel, or Pixie, whatever you want to call me. Uh, today I'm going to be running through a quick life drawing session where I will draw animals, mostly horses and other equines. Um, let us take a bit of a look here. Okay, so life drawing is basically where you look at reference images and you try to replicate them in a fairly short amount of time. Or at least replicate the feeling of it, the gesture of it. So if you have a uh, fully realistically rendered drawing of a horse, your replication of it is mostly focused on what kind of pose are they in? You know, what, what sort of, uh, what's the flow of the gesture that they have at the moment? So, let us click over to this site called Line of Action. Uh, this basically is a site that has a bunch of reference images for all sorts of animals. Let's click onto equine and other hooved. Uh, let's show only live ones just because it's probably going to be a little bit more lively the poses are going to be a little bit more true to form true to what they actually do rather than uh, possibly just posed most of my experience in doing gesture drawing is with live models so me and a bunch of other artists will go to a uh, specific location uh, with a model uh, the model will run through poses starting off with a minute two minutes five minutes and then working up to say 15 20 minute poses um, and that basically just lets you get more and more detailed as you sort of uh, get into the session. Over here, there's uh, different kinds of sessions, so you can either go all the same length. So, for example, every single drawing will be 30 seconds, 2 minutes, whatever you choose. Or there's class mode. Uh, let's run through class mode. Um, let's go for half an hour. I don't know if I'll actually record for that long, but 10 poses, 30 seconds, 5 poses a minute. Yeah, something like that sounds good. Okay, let us have a look and get started. Right, so I'm just going to have the uh, actual life drawing uh, poses down here in the bottom corner for you so you can see what I'm drawing. Let us get started. Okay. Oh, I'm wasting a lot of time here. All right, let's start with this one. Let's... It's only the 30 seconds, so we're basically looking to get very, very just very basic. So say the, the spine. Now they've got their head down a bit. Let's start with a bit more gestural, a bit more uh, interesting. You can start putting on some extra details. Okay, that's done. Uh, second drawing. Got the head in there. Now I'm fairly experienced with this, so I know sort of how to how I can start off without too much drama. Don't be concerned at all if all you get is just one line. Because if you can honestly, if you can get one line in, that's all you need to sort of start off. I'm more experienced doing it with uh, proper pen and paper. So you have to excuse my... Uh, Oh, this is a weird one. What are they doing? They've got this weird hooves are sort of out here a bit. Uh, I love these horns. Okay, uh, let's figure out how to actually get rid of my things. All right, I am back. I now know how to move the canvas. Uh, I've also moved to a different kind of a brush. Okay, let's let's go 12 seconds. Uh, so the basic goal with gesture drawing is to basically uh, is to loosen up and get a better feeling of how you can make 
poses, uh, how, you, how you can replicate poses that look expressive. Basically, the short time frames are to, in a lot of ways, just loosen you up. And get you thinking on your toes because you can't you can't spend too many time not too much time on any of these we've only got 30 seconds to actually complete a full drawing of a horse so let's figure out how we can actually get the most amount of the horse down shortest amount of time. That is horrendous, but not the point. The point is to try out different stuff and learn. Ooh, I like that. Let's go a bit more for the overall. Focusing way too much on the muzzle when I should not be. I should be focusing on getting these legs down, getting these legs looking alright. Where's that? That's something along these lines. Okay. Look at this big white horse. Sort of looking down a bit forlorn almost. Uh, Ooh. That's a very interesting striking almost pose. Now when you're when you're life drawing or when you're gesture drawing, don't worry about erasing. Okay. That's a very interesting picture. Alright, last one. Horse is fallen, and hopefully we'll be able to get up at some point. But it's not getting up right now. How the hell do these legs work? Okay, so this is a one-minute drawing now. Pick a slightly greener color for this. Okay, now we've got more time. Let's start off similar. Bit more time, so we've got a bit more uh, t time to actually refine the different shapes. Bit of a bump there, a bit more of a Draw big. Draw big. Bit, bit of a boring uh, pose, but we want to get down the feeling of it more than how it actually looks. Where, where do these feet land? They're roughly there. There. Okay.
So. The thing with, uh, with this kind of drawing is that you also get a feeling for how much to exaggerate things. If you draw everything exactly as it looks, you're going to end up with a drawing that's fairly stiff, that's fairly... Uh, doesn't have any life to it. You Basically, to get something that actually looks realistic, you do need to exaggerate features. You do need to push how things seem to you a bit out of proportion. Ah, uh, this, this uh, cow is very, very close to us. Let's go away. That's sort of how I see their action line going, the line going through their head and everything. It's got a bit more in depth on the head here. Lots and lots of close-ups. Let's, let's instead of starting at that, we'll start with the, this kind of a head. So as you go through your life drawing session, it's a fact that you, or as as you as you uh, go to more and more life drawing sessions, or as you run your own life drawing sessions like this, you will over time get to know what kinds of simplifications you like to make. What, how do you like to kind of focus yourself? Do you like to focus on the uh, overall line of the figure? Do you, do you like to focus in on some specific bits of anatomy and you feel like that's uh, the best way to sort of get your vibe of the pose going? Five minutes, okay, bloody hell. Now I have a bit of actual time to do some stuff. Uh, no, let's go for that more yellow. That's more yellow. Oh, that's pretty. A bit more time to get this right. Now, when I'm actually drawing in a pen and pad, I would just like go over my old stuff a whole lot. Uh, let's let's do that here actually. Bit of a Like the, the main goal of life drawing, oh sorry, of uh, well, gesture sketching, life drawing, whatever, isn't to get it looking exactly, especially for sort of earlier poses, it's to get the overall vibe down, so. So I know that when I draw horses, I tend to break it down into sort of this shoulderish area. That is a big hoof, large hoof. And then a fairly one of your stuff here. Like when I draw uh, people, I know which bits I like to exaggerate, which bits I like to sort of keep in more standard proportions. How I end up, and, and how I end up, uh, how I do end up uh, making those decisions is kind of helps me work out my style, I think. I don't know if this is useful at all, but if it is, yay. And as, as the sessions get longer, or as, as the um, amount of time you have for each drawing gets longer, you also uh, start to kind of figure out what do you like including or not including. Like I know people who go really in depth with the head always. Uh, that's that's usually me. 
I, I try to go super in depth with the rend rendering of the head when it comes to people at least. I haven't done any actual physical drawing sessions with horses because it's uh, very difficult to get a horse to stand still in a place fairly close to where I live, which is not near many horses. Uh, So now I'm kind of at the stage where I've got most of the drawing in. So let's cut back a little bit. This is me using an eraser, sort of if I'm uh, working on it physically. Or if I'm working on it physically, honestly, what I would be doing here is I would be not drawing as dark. Because it's a uh, Clip Studio paint. I need to uh, do everything with the same opacity with this pen. Uh, I need to try some different stuff. Maybe, maybe something like that for the next one. Uh, let's do this actually for this one. That's the cool thing with uh, gesture sketching and life drawing in general. Uh, at least for me, gesture sketching is just a kind of life drawing, a specific focus when you're doing life drawing, especially the shorter minutes, should, sorry, the shorter lengths of time. Uh, when I'm doing this, you know, with my pencils and stuff, I really like having a couple of different uh, mediums and just switching between them a whole bunch. So I'll carry uh, around some Tombow markers, I'll carry some uh, uh, water, uh, sorry, some uh, water brushes and a little tin of liquid graphite or something like that, or, or what I say, graphite. And I'll switch between the uh, different kinds of mediums as I sort of go through each session. So to get the feeling that he's actually off the ground. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Perfect, no, but to be honest, the goal isn't to get things looking absolutely perfect, the goal is to get a bit of a feeling of how to loosen up, how do I look at something like this pose that's just popped up, I don't know, what button is that? Uh, how do I look at this kind of a pose that's just popped up and sort of get the feeling of it down without it looking super robotic. So, big wide gestural strokes. Something like that might work. Oh, 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 don't do that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, bloody hell, that, that does not look like the head that I'm seeing at all. That's this pen tool is a little bit strange. Honestly, that's the uh, good thing about no. There's, there's nothing good about that pen. Oh my god. Okay. That's the good thing about trying it. Different stuff in life drawing sessions is that, uh, or gesture drawing sessions is that you don't really need to stress too much because none of your stuff is meant to look good. It's all meant to just be practice. It's all meant to be kind of uh, just for learning, just for sort of seeing how things go. And so it doesn't really matter if it looks a bit strange or a bit off, or honestly, if all of your uh, all of the things that you do. Ooh, that's a fun one. Or if all the things you do look different and none of it looks the same or if it all looks really inconsistent or whatever because who cares? You're just practicing, you're just messing about, you're just trying out some stuff. Okay. How long have I got? Christ, I've got like two minutes left. I have heaps of time. I do not need to worry about a single thing at all. Let's have some fun. Let's switch it up a bit. Get a bit of the uh, green grass in here. 
think that in general I've got sort of the feeling of that pose down. It's like this loose line running through the whole the whole piece. So now because I have some extra time, I'm reasonably ha happy with how this has gone so far. I can just screw around, add whatever I want to. And this is kind of, for me, where it can get to uh, looking fun and uh, looking like something I want to keep. So once I'm done, once I've got what I want out of it, I've got the sort of the gestural aspect down, I can dive a bit more into the, uh, you know, maybe adding a bit more texture or a bit more whatever to sort of, Let's try something like that, maybe. Uh, okay, let's let's have a look. On the actual reference picture, there is a bit of a yellowy tinge. Around here, around here, around there. Uh, and so with the tips of the ear where the fur is there. Yeah. There's also a little bump there which I haven't got. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I'm not a super big fan of that texture that I've just added there, but screw it. Keep drawing over the top. Especially when I'm doing this kind of thing, because most of the time I'm working with uh, pen and pencil, there's not really much I can do if I screw up, or if I do something that I'm not super deep happy with. Just need to uh, take it, acknowledge it, and then kind of move forward from there. Here's something else I like doing when I'm doing gesture sketching or life drawing in general: is I will be like, okay, so this one took five minutes. I had five minutes to do the picture, so I'll draw five and a circle around it. And this really helps when I'm, uh, I've got multiple things on the page. So these ones, 30 seconds, go all the way over to uh, 10 minutes here, okay. One for one minute. One minute, five minutes. Okay, now we've got to a big, big boy on this 10 minute piece. Okay, let's start off like we have before. Start off with the uh, overall gesture sketch or overall uh, line of action. Now, with this drawing, I've got two main pieces. I've got the uh, sort of the shoulders, which are that and I've got these which are sort of springy ready to ready to strike almost this majestic majestic mane of hers Uh, one of the other things to deal with is because you're drawing so quickly, often you'll find that your life or your basic drawing, your initial like rough rough lines, aren't exactly in proportion. That'll just get better over time. Um, I actually I actually find that in terms of Getting a decent idea of proportions. Uh, one of the best ways for me to do that is to do quick life drawings because it lets me sort of break down how to get the rough uh, positions of things all in place quickly. But for example, I'm not super happy with how the relationships there work. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, uh, this whole 
last drawing I'm super not that happy with. This looks off and strange, I think. Yeah, the tail is uh, dodgy as. See if we can recover it. If not, that's fine. It's all learning. It's all practice. Put a little gap there where the uh, metal comes together. Put a little gap there. And I can see a little bit of a. Oh, it's out like that. In there. Uh, let's sort of redo that head for a bit. Got a bit of a uh, downwardy looking thing. So looking away from us. So. Yeah, when, when you're gesture sketching as well, don't be worried to completely scrap and redo everything about what you're doing. I got six minutes left and I think that is... Uh... Yeah, I'm just not happy with it at all. Yeah. Let me just mark this down. Ten. Cool. So I'll do some more uh, drawings with this same... Reference picture. Let's start again down here. I'll start with a different uh, pen. Let's go with Asimo. See how that goes. Try some different stuff. That ear is curved in a very strange way. Uh, But the point, ultimately, of gesture sketching is to sort of work out the different ways that you can solve problems when it comes to looking at poses, looking at how 3D forms are laid out. You know, with this whole body, what different ways can I break it up? Can I break it up in, you know, this section of the body? Or can I do it like a bean? Or is this uh, whole shoulder sort of the most important part for me to look at right now there's a lot of especially when you have a bit of a time limit it sort of forces you to go through break down a bit more of what is important to you what sort of are the main parts that you see And I'll say, it takes a lot of bloody time and a lot of bloody effort. This is not something that you'll uh, just try out a few times and be good at, or try out, you know, once a month, and, you know, in a couple of months you'll be great. It'll take ages. It will take a lot of practice and a lot of messing about with getting things wrong and getting things not looking how you want them to. But that's, you know, that's why I think it's a fun exercise. This helps me loosen. I, I try to do it uh, a, a sort of a life drawing -y, gesture sketchy session at least sort of once every, well, it depends on how busy you am, but somewhere between like once every couple of weeks, once every few weeks. At the minimum, just to try to make sure that I'm being a bit, uh, that I'm forcing myself to be a little bit loose. Let's get this glorious tail down. This tail has some lovely shapes in it. This mane does as well. A 
what it also what this kind of drawing also helps you do is it helps stop you from uh, relying so much on how you think things look like if I look at an eye I'm like oh yeah eye but the, the horse's eye does not look anything like that the horse's eye is more like and the reference is kind of like this you know, it forces me to have to look at the reference pay attention to it sort of see try to see exactly what I'm actually doing exactly what the actual reference is doing exactly how things are shaped this neck this neck is so thick mine is not okay let's do some uh, adjustments this cheek never really noticed it until I started just sketching real horses but these neck of these cheeks are very bulgy okay that's better I think I think I'm more happy with this in terms of how this uh, looks but a little bit of extra time we've got a minute and a half so let us get into a bit of uh, shading just very roughly Uh, luckily, because I'm using the computer, I have a bit of freedom to control Z. But normally, I do not. And it's just go with your gut. And if it stuffs up, you're stuffed. Or, you know, you can try to do some other stuff. Put some other different colors on top or something like that. It's completely in shadow back here. Way in shadow. the same thing we did with this one a bit of green bit of a uh, bit of that a bit of light on there as well just for fun just for the ex whole excitement of it bit of a Ten seconds, oh my god, no. Uh, most important bits of light stuff. Okay, let's just do it. Alright, that's the uh, session finished. A bit of colour around there, because why not? Okay, so uh, that is uh, the life drawing session finished. Yay! Let's see what we got. Uh, We got first with the 30 second ones. Very, very rough. Very rough. So that one you can kind of see uh, the whole leaning to the side, galloping a bit, especially with the uh, this hook if you see it kind of curling around itself. Uh, we've got this fella here strolling along. This very ill-defined fella standing there uh, that's that's fun and that very fun pose down there uh, let's see if I do the fun one minute one minute you're getting a bit more or I'm getting a bit more uh, structure in there a bit more actual shapes of the body around a bit more defined you know put a, put a bit more shape in there but starting off with sort of the line of action starting off with sort of the basic you know, if I'm drawing a person, it's kind of like head, basic line of action might be something more along these lines. That's kind of the equivalent of lines of action for people, but getting a bit more five minutes sort of getting uh, a bit more and once you get under 10 minutes it's kind of able to get two relatively okay drawings of sort of how the thing looks now if I just jump straight into the 10 minute drawing it wouldn't look like this it would look stiff it would look uh, uncomfortable it would just not look 
like a pose that a real animal would do. I think this one, this one at the top here, is one that looks relatively decent. These two look relatively uh, fluid, relatively uh, not like they're robots, which is called sort of the main point of gesture drawing, of sort of focusing on that, getting the realistic look down, getting uh, opening you up a bit. Uh, so in terms of gesturing, I think that's mostly it. That's just like a little gesturing session from me. I'll chuck this uh, a PNG of this, a image of this in the description. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, give us a yell anywhere. Always happy to help. And see you later.